Welcome to Biology 1440. This is the pre-lab video for Lab 1. Be sure to check back to this lab website often for updates and more pre-lab videos. They will help you to be ready for pre-lab quizzes. We have a few learning goals this week. These are the major three. We're going to learn about lab safety and attendance rules. We're going to learn how to avoid academic integrity violations and we're going to practice making graphs and figure captions. These are collectively known as figures. I would advise you go to the uh, list of lab safety rules in your manual uh, and read these before coming to lab, but let's review a few of the major lab safety rules now. You never know, there could be a quiz when you attend lab one. We need to ensure that we read the lab manual before coming to class and check out any pre-lab videos that are posted before lab as well. You need to let your instructor know of any allergies that you have. That's very important. You should know where the fire extinguisher, eye wash, and first aid kits are located as well as the chemical shower. You should also know how to evacuate the building, which we'll talk about in a moment. It is never okay to eat or drink in the lab. If you have any kind of food, leave it zipped up in your backpack. Do not get it out in lab. And never put anything in your mouth which has been out in lab, including your fingers. Uh, you never know what's on a lab bench. There have been many times when I've been in a scientific lab and I've suddenly realized my shirt has been stained or I have a hole in my clothes that has been eaten by some chemical agent that I did not see. So you have to be very safe in a scientific lab. Now we typically don't use anything too dangerous in Bio 1, but that doesn't mean we can be lax on safety rules. If you are told to wear protective eyewear, please do. We have some in the lab, uh, or you can bring your own, and that's, in, that's over the top of eyeglasses. Even if you wear normal eyeglasses, you have to wear safety glasses over the top. Um, we have gloves available as well, which you can wear as often as you'd like uh, if you want to wear gloves, uh, but there will be some labs where they are mandatory. Um, it is never okay to wear open toe shoes to labs. So if I can see your toes, if your teacher can see your toes, you're not allowed to come to lab. Um, so make sure your shoes are those that protect your toes. There's always a chance of chemical spills or broken glass on the floor, so we cannot wear open toe shoes. Make sure that you dress appropriately, meaning closed toe shoes and no bare midriffs uh, in class. You might occasionally want to tie back long hair to keep it out of, uh, out of the experimental apparatus. If you break anything or are injured in any way, you must let your instructor know immediately. And also, please clean up your lab bench thoroughly before leaving. And that also includes the benches around the back of the room. Bio One tends to have labs back to back, so it's up to you to ensure the lab is ready for the next course. Always dispose of items in their proper location. And another thing I want to add is um, don't be late to class. You have to listen to your instructor's pre-lab lecture, and that happens right away. So basically, if you are more than 10 minutes late to lab, you probably will not be allowed to attend. You'll be counted absent, and you will not be able to make up that missed lab. So be there on time, every time. First aid kits are generally located in the prep room, and if you have an injury, your instructor will provide you with a Band-Aid or whatever is needed, and then uh, may escort you to student health or to the hospital or whatever is necessary. But do not be ashamed about telling your instructor if you've been injured. It's very important that you do so. In case of emergency, Bio One Labs will turn right out of the hallway and head out of the building across Weston Avenue and meet in the faculty parking lot across the street. Typically what will happen is a student will be chosen as the leader of the group and the lab instructor will be the last one out behind the group to ensure everyone gets out of the building. It's very important that you don't run off if there is a building evacuation because if you're not there, the fire department will be looking for you. Now another thing I want to talk about on the pre-lab video here is avoiding academic integrity violations. So this is one of the ways that students often fail Bio 1 is by inadvertently or 
on purpose, of course, cheating. And you want to avoid that. Um, so first of all, do not work closely with other students outside of lab. We work together in lab, but we don't usually work together outside of lab. So if you have a lab report, let's say, or a graph assignment, do it uh, outside of lab and don't work too closely with others. It's too easy to have someone copy off of you or to be tempted to copy off of them if you're working closely with someone. Do not share your work with other students. It's always sad when someone knows what they're doing, they do a good job, and then their lab partner says, hey, can I see how you did the graph? And then you want to be nice, so you say, sure, here, here's what I did. And then they copy off of you. Then you both get zeros, and you both run the risk of being dropped from the course. So do not share your work with other students. You can tell them how to do something or show them how to do something. It's always useful to teach others. They'll learn and you'll learn it as well, even better. But don't do it for them and don't show them your work. You also uh, cannot resubmit assignments from past semesters uh, or other courses. Uh, even if you did the work, you can't do that. And always be sure to cite outside sources, um, your textbook, your lab manual, um, anything from the web or a scientific paper. Uh, you have to cite when you get information from other sources and you never directly quote other sources in Bio 1. Um, never copy and paste, basically, okay? It's never cool to copy and paste. So uh, another way I'll just point out right now that students often miss points for cheating is let's say uh, you're told to do a figure and so you make a graph. And what often happens is one person at the lab bench makes the graph and they share it with everyone else at the lab bench and they all write a different caption underneath it. Well, if four different people make a graph, generally they will look different. Everyone will have unique differences on that graph. And if everyone at the lab bench has the exact same graph, it's very suspicious and often it's obvious that cheating was occurring and zeros will be given. So just avoid copying and pasting anything in Bio 1. It's usually a bad idea. In Bio 1, whenever you put your name on an assignment and turn it in, you are assenting to the Bio 1 honor code, which states that I have neither given nor received aid for this work, nor am I aware of anyone giving or receiving aid for this work. Please uh, also follow up with the uh, student handbook uh, on academic integrity violations to read about what constitutes a violation and possible repercussions, but they include being dropped from the course or even being expelled from the university. To get ready for lab this week, I recommend that you review the metric system and how to convert from one unit to another. It's something you'll be doing your entire career, uh, so start now. It's something that we'll review a little bit in lab, but you'll be expected, you're already expected to know how to do this. You should refresh your memory on how to do this. Another thing we'll be doing this week then, as I stated earlier, is graphing. And just to uh, let you know how this works, you have some graph paper in your manual. You want to set up your graph with your independent variable on the x-axis. That's the thing that you change, that you have control over. And the dependent variable is on the y-axis. That's the thing that depends on the independent variable. When you set up your graph, you want to make sure that the uh, scale within an axis is uniform all the way across. That you don't have major jumps in your numbers and things like that. So be very careful to plan it out carefully. We never turn in just graphs in Bio 1. We always turn in figures, which is a graph with a figure caption. And in your lab manual, we have instructions on how to do that. You can read that manual yourself in the appendix. I believe it's page 67 if I've updated the PowerPoint correctly. You can check out how to do that. Um, and in the uh, lab manual, there's an example graph and caption. So this entire thing would be called a figure. So here we have our x-axis, which is our independent variable, which is temperature. That's something you had the power to control. Uh, you tested 15 to 65 degrees Celsius, so it has a unit as well as a label, so a title, right? The y-axis is beta sine in concentration, and here's the units. And to make this even better, I, I, I would probably put the brackets around beta sine to indicate that it's concentration here, something that we could even fix in future lab manual editions. Um, and then we have 
numbers that are equally spaced along these axes. So this one starts at zero, the y-axis. Uh, here we have 15 on the x-axis. And every line is a uniform change. Every grid line is a uniform change on the graph. And we've labeled everything on here to help you understand what's going on. Now down here is the caption. Captions are always done in about the same way. Now just to point out, in this first lab, you may not be required to put everything in the captions shown in this example, uh, but this is a complete figure and caption like we would expect you to be making uh, in a few weeks. Um, your instructor may or may not talk to you about error bars this first week, so if, if you don't talk about it, don't get too worried about it just yet. But we always start with, a, with the word figure and a number, figure one, figure two, figure three, whatever it is, however many figures you have uh, that you're turning in that day. Then a title sentence. So there's no title above the graph. The title goes in the caption, which goes below the graph. There's a title, and then a second sentence that describes the major trends of the data. What happened here? So it talks about leakage from segments incubated um, at you know lower temperatures were similar. They don't change much, but there's a 245% increase in beta cyanide leakage between 40 and 60 degrees Celsius. So what's going on here? There is a quantitative description of the amount of change from uh, here uh, to, to up to here, I guess. Yeah, here to here. So all of these are about the same. The error bars overlap. And we could do further statistical analyses to see if they are really different, which we can talk about later. But based on just observing the changes, there's not much change at lower temperatures. And then from here to here, there's a major spike. So you do the math, and you figure out the percent change. And that there's information on how to do that in the lab manual. And then the last statement here is very important. And students sometimes forget to put this in there. This is something you have to use your, your mind and determine when it's appropriate to put this information in, in the, in the uh, figure caption and when it's not. In this case, each of these dots on the graph is an average, right? And so you put the word mean here to indicate that each dot is an average. And then there are error bars here. And those error bars could be all kinds of things, standard error, standard deviation. They could even be range. So you have to tell the reader what they are, plus and minus SE. That means that there is a plus and a minus standard error for each of those dots. And then you put the sample size. In this case, n equals 3 per treatment. What does that mean? That's the number of uh, treatments that you average together to get each dot. Okay. Now, let's say you've, did, you've done a real simple experiment, and there are no averages. Well, then you wouldn't put mean. There would be no error bars. You would just put n equals 1 per treatment right there. Okay. So you have to... You have to approach this with a little bit of logic and, and uh, figure out when it's appropriate to put what in this last statement. Generally speaking, in most of our figures, we'll have mean plus and minus SE, sample size, which could be n equals 3, could be n equals 5, could be n equals 6. You'll have to figure out what it is for that lab. And you'll want to include a statement much like this one at the end of your figure caption. So come to lab on time, bring your manual, bring something to write with, and uh, you'll be working in lab groups, so it's going to be important to work together. And uh, a few tips from Professor Karafit, the lab coordinator, uh, would be ensure that you turn your work in on time, that you do not work too closely with others, that you do your own work. And I think students are tempted to cheat when they don't understand how to do something, when they didn't quite catch how to do it, or they didn't take good notes in lab. So take good notes in lab, and make sure you write down your instructor's contact information. Also take note of any tutoring hours offered by the department or at the tutoring center in the library. Don't cheat. Instead, get help. Ask for help. Come to our offices. Uh, you know, look when our offices, office hours are or email us and come and talk to us. We're here to help you to learn. Um, don't learn the hard way uh, by cheating and being dropped from the course. All right? So make sure to check out these lab vi videos each week. Get ready for lab because there could be lab quizzes at any point over the information in your lab manual, over the information from the previous lab, uh, as well as information from these videos. So be ready. And uh, I'll see you next week.